Glad you're here for our midweek Bible study. If you're visiting with us, we're grateful for your presence. And we hope that you can be back with us this come Sunday morning for our Bible study at 9 and our worship at 10. Please plan on coming back and being with us. Uh, several announcements and reminders to, uh, to bring about. Um, first of all, some updates on our sick. Um, Mackenzie Broad is here tonight. It's all in class. She's feeling well, but she is supposed to go back to, uh, to Nashville for, for more tests. So let's please continue to keep her in our prayers. Um, also, as mentioned in the bulletin, David Robinson will be having a biopsy done this Friday. And uh, Kenneth Osmer is not here, so he's still not feeling well. He's at home, so Kenneth's at home. Uh, and so just remember him and also others that are, that are homebound. And um, let's keep them, all those, in our prayers. No, I don't. Okay, so Mike Womack, uh, Sherry, no, <laughs> they're, they're going like this. Not tomorrow. We got the class, so. Okay. All right. Let's just keep Mike in our prayers as well. And um, any other updates? <laughs> okay, good. Um, if you take a song book and turn to number 263, number 263, that'll be our song of encouragement. Um, We'll be led in closing prayer this evening by Brother Jackson Richard. Um, it was mentioned about the mowing. The mowing has begun. Uh, if you're interested in being on a mowing team this year uh, and helping with the outside work, please see Steve Bramlett. If you have been mowing in the past, uh, we'd appreciate if you could continue that effort as well. Now, Rob Lenore has also asked for help with the church webpage, so see him if you, if you can do that. Uh, we continue to, to collect money for the Honduras, the buildings that are going to be, the homes that are going to be built down there, and also collecting for the uh, clinics and the clothing and so forth. So uh, keep that just as a reminder to participate in that if you can. Um, also, the Honduras team will be meeting this coming Sunday morning after worship, so we plan to, to hang around for that if you're going to make the trip down there. Um, there will be a sunshine basket in the lobby for Doris Newman. Please put your gifts along with a note to cheer her up. She's still, of course, home and having trouble with her back, and we're trying to encourage her for that. And also, uh, men, remember the breakfast is coming up Saturday the 17th, if you haven't thought about signing up for that. Tim? We apologize first to Steve for messing up his announcements and then to Sherry for messing up the family announcements. We, we in class had a roundabout and were gathering information secondhand, obviously, and uh, were uh, advised that the latest was that Mike was going to have surgery tomorrow. Obviously, that's not the case. We'll wait for an update at a more opportune time, and uh, we'll look forward to that. If you'd like to turn with me and read, let's go back to the book of Psalm 103. I'm going to start with verse 8. Psalm 103, 8 and following. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, as such to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. 
the marvelous testimony of those who have lived before. In reading these words from David in Psalm 103, it's hard to imagine how long ago it was that David lived. 3,000 years ago, David wrote those words, give or take. But that's the timing of when we're talking about. How many people have lived since then? Countless. How many people have been faithful to God? Also perhaps countless. And here's David describing life. And he says, you know, God, God, is, not, uh, not, God is not unforgiving. He is not someone to hold his anger toward us or the fact that we have sinned against him always. He has forgiven us. He hasn't, he hasn't given us what we deserved. If he had given us what we deserved, we'd all been destroyed. But David says, we have been blessed. God has given us forgiveness according to his mercy, not according to our justice. Justice demands, Paul said, the wages of sin is death. That's what justice demands. But the gift of God is Jesus Christ. How do we look at life? I can only answer for me. I have no idea how you see life. I know in my head that this life is temporary. I know in my head that the time will come when I die. I know in my head that life is, is relatively short and that after a period of life of, and I have no guarantees of what life will be, I've made it 50 plus years, I, I may make 60 or 70 or 80, I don't know. But after how many ever years that is, not likely to make 100, I'll be gone. You'll be gone. We'll all be gone. And David says, God understands us. He knows what we're like. He knows about us. He, we have been created and, and we are but grass. We are here for a short period of time. We, our lives are, are, are just brief. And then the wind passes over them and we're gone. And God knows this about us. And so he has prepared for us a special covenant, a relationship, so that as if we live our lives here faithful to his covenant, then his blessings toward us are eternal. Here in Psalm 103, we have an encapsulated discussion of the existence of humanity. That we are here for a little while. That we are called on to, to answer to God or not. But our time here soon will be that we're brushed away. And then we'll stand before God. The Christian... Those of us who put our hope in God, our trust in God, as we gather together on a regular basis, on Sunday and on Wednesday, we comfort one another with the testimony. We believe that life will go on. Our God will take care of our hearts and our souls. I have these things that I have given to God, Paul says, and I know that God will take care of them. Until that day. And so we as Christians, we testify to one another as we sing songs of praise, as we lift our voices up in prayer, and we thank our Father and Creator of all things for the blessing in the, in the blood of Jesus of Nazareth and the testimony of the promise of hope and life and eternity. What a wonderful comfort it is in the face of a world that is is bleak and is troubled and is concerned only with the, the physical things of the world, that Christians, those who come to trust in God, can rise above many of those troubles and say, it really doesn't matter who is going to win this election, or it doesn't matter what's going to happen to this problem of life, or it doesn't matter whether or not these countries go to war. My existence does not depend on the things of this world. I'm looking for another world. I'm looking for another place. I'm looking for happiness in the kingdom of God. Are you a Christian tonight? If so, you share that hope. 
If you're not faithful, make sure you live your life according to the will of God. And when there are things in your life that need to be corrected, make them right. The invitation song is for you. This evening, tonight, if you've never been obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ, confessed the name of Jesus as the Son of God, been baptized for the remission of sins, do it tonight. Right just now, as we stand and sing in a moment. It may also be that you are not living as you need, and you need to make a change. The invitation is for you as well. Make a change tonight if you need to, as we stand and as we sing. song. <clears throat> the first and last of this will be dismissed in prayer. <clears throat> hey, lead us me, O blessed God, O day. Thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to come here and worship you. Thank you for this church and 
all the church members and what they do here for this congregation. Please be with us as we go through our daily walks of life and help us make good decisions and be with us when we make bad decisions. Thank you for your son dying on the cross so we can have a chance to live in heaven with you one day. And in Christ's name, amen.